anemia is a type of macrocytic anemia which means mcv that is mean corpuscular volume is greater than 100 femtoliters in some books it is given as greater than 96 femtoliters for, but here for the convenience to remember it i have given it as more than 100 femtoliters macrocytic anemias are subdivided into megaloblastic and non megaloblastic anemia the reason why i have given this statement was i have seen students who use this both terms interchangeably like they think that mac macrocytic anemia is equal to megaloblastic anemia but this is not the fact megaloblastic anemia is due to folate and vitamin b12 deficiency and non megaloblastic anemia is due to macrocytosis that is related to the alcohol intoxication like I have said before this is due to white megaloblastic anemia is due to vitamin b12 and folic acid deficiency these both deficiencies most commonly affects rapid rapidly growing tissues in the body that is bone marrow and GIT and what happens in bone marrow hematopoiesis takes place and next First, let's see about vitamin B12 digestion and it's a process of absorption. Folic acid is not given here, but because most probably folic about folic acid, it is not uh, it is not asked. There were only two few important things about folic acid digestion and absorption. Now I'm, I will I will explain it in later part. First, let's see about dietary uh, vitamin B12. Okay. Dietary vitamin B12 is present in two forms. That is, either it can be present in the free form or it can be pre present by binding to the other proteins. Okay. The free, uh, the free vitamin B12 which is present is bound to the R binders. This is secreted by gastric mucosa on one hand. On the other hand, is it is also secreted by salivary glands <coughs> in the mouth where free vitamin B12 is attach it to the R binder and it will go along the GAT tract and into the small intestine. I remember that nothing happens to the free type of vitamin B12. Okay. On the other hand, the pro, uh, the vitamin B12 which is which is protein bonded will get broken by the HCL which is produced by the parietal cells. Parietal cells also produce another important component which is called as intrinsic factor which is called as intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor also helps in the absorption of vitamin B12. Okay. So as soon as the R, uh, this R binder vitamin B12 complex enters into the small intestine, pancreas produce some type of proteases which fill cleaves of this vitamin B12 from the R binder and makes it available to attach uh, to make it available to attach to the intrinsic factor. This intrinsic factor vitamin B12 complex is absorbed through the intestinal mucosa in the terminal ileum remember this guys vitamin b12 absorption takes place in the terminal ileum okay and as soon as it enters into the intestinal epithelium it is transported into the blood and the and the transporting form of vitamin b12 is called as transcobalamin 2 if there is transcobalamin cobalamin 2 then there should be transcobalamin 1 this r binder is called as transcobalamin 1 okay and out of the 100% which is 100% uh, vitamin b12 which is absorbed 50% of it is absorbed by the liver and 50% of it is uh, taken into the other tissues vitamin b12 is absorbed from the terminal ileum and folic acid is absorbed from uh, sorry is absorbed from i have given it wrong here folic acid is absorbed from jejunum in the form of methyl tetrahydro sorry in the form of tetrahydrofolate which is a monoglutamate i'll explain it uh, i'll explain it later iron is absorbed in the duodenum okay vitamin b12 is absorbed from the terminal ileum folic acid is absorbed from the jejunum and iron is absorbed from the duodenum and remember guys if if you are going to stop taking folic acid today you are going to develop folic acid deficiency in three to six months that is liver liver can replenish this uh, sorry a liver will get depleted of folic acid stores in three to six months uh, but on the other hand if we take vitamin b12 liver can, uh, liver can end up is uh, can lose its stores in three to nine years okay for uh, first of all let's say today you are going to stop taking folic acid you are going to develop folic acid deficiency in three to six months while on the other hand if you are going to stop taking vitamin b12 today you are going to develop vitamin b12 deficiency in three to nine years okay and next 
I have given the same picture again here. This is due to let's see how this vitamin B12 deficiency is causing disease. Okay, there was uh, some type of scenarios, and we can explain it by this uh, simple picture. Okay, first, let's say the patient is taking less amount of vitamin B12 in his food. Okay, the richest source of vitamin B12 was meat products, and and on the other hand, the richest source of folic acid was leafy vegetables. Okay. The richest source of dietary uh, dietary B12 was animal products, and the richest source of folic acid were leafy vegetables. Okay, uh, for, let's say the patient is taking less amount of vitamin B12, then there will be less amount of vitamin B12 to get absorbed from the intestine, so vitamin B12 deficiency takes place. First scenario, and the next scenario in which a disease called as pernicious anemia, which will in which antibodies come and attack this parietal cells, which are in the body body part of the stomach do at least do remember that antibodies act against parietal cells of the of the stomach which is present in the body of the stomach okay so when this parietal cells will get destroyed hcl and hcl and intrinsic, fa intrinsic factor cannot be uh, cannot be released so vitamin b12 cannot be bound to the uh, cannot be bound to the intrinsic factor and it, and it cannot be absorbed okay and next scenario let's come down for suppose let's say the patient has chronic pancreatitis in which these proteases cannot be released into the GIT then this complex like uh, that is vitamin B12 R better complex cannot be cleaved off and then vitamin B12 cannot be attached to the intrinsic factor and it cannot be absorbed okay and next scenario let's say there is a um, there is overgrowth of bacteria if there is overgrowth of bacteria whatever the vitamin B12 and folic acid comes here it is taken up by the uh, bacteria over there this is due to when back a bacteria di uh, bacteria divides it also needs vitamin b12 and folic acid so whatever the bacteria which is growing here it will take up all the vitamin b12 and folic acid which is uh, which we are taking in the diet and very less or uh, very less or none of these elements are uh, are delivered to the human body okay and next Let's say there is a condition which is called as Crohn's disease, which most commonly affects the terminal ileum. Then, if the intestinal villi, intestinal villi is lost, this complex cannot be absorbed inside. So, understood the scenarios. First one is uh, uh, malnutrition, and next one is pernicious anemia, and next one is chronic pancreatitis, and next one is bacterial overgrowth, and next is the celiac uh, terminal ileum diseases like celiac flu and all. <clears throat> So let's see the causes of vitamin B12 deficiency here. First, decreased intake, like in the pure vegan diet, where breastfeed infant, infants of pure vegans may develop deficiency because vegans does not take both animal products and milk products. <clears throat> Next is malnutrition. This is due to the lack of animal product, as vitamin B12 is rich source uh, is animals, so this cannot be uh, so vitamin B12 deficiency occurs in these type of patients. And malabsorption, intrinsic factor. A reduced intrinsic factor is seen in autoimmune destruction of parietal cells that is pernicious anemia or gastrectomy <clears throat> and reduced gastric acid cannot activate pepsinogen to release vitamin b12 from the protein sorry oh, hydrochloric acid does not uh, directly cleaves off the protein um, cleaves of vitamin b12 from the protein it indirectly activates activates pepsinogen to uh, pepsinogen to pepsin this pepsin will break the protein product and vitamin b12 is released so when there is a deficiency of gastric acid this conversion does not occur and vitamin b12 deficiency occurs reduced intestinal absorption like i said before like in the crohn's disease or celiac disease involving the terminal ileum in which loss of absorptive cells occurs and next if there is bacterial overgrowth bacterial utilization of available vitamin b12 like in the chronic pancreatitis cannot play off our binder and if there is fish type worm infection and infiltrate small bowel infiltrate disorder of small bowel like in the malignant lymphoma <coughs> intestinal absorption reduces which leads to vitamin b12 deficiency next other causes where if there is increased utilization like in pregnancy or lactation in which but the female the female patient has to deliver vitamin b12 and folic acid stores from its body to the fetus if fetus is a rapidly growing uh, so fetus is growing tissue it needs to continuously divide so vitamin b12 and folic acid stores to be uh, folic acid should be continuously given to the <coughs> uh, continuously given to the cells in order for the fetal growth 
if the deficiency of folic acid occurs it, it leads to neural tube defects in the children sorry in the infants deficiency is more likely if the patient is a pure vegan because they don't take up both milk products and uh, animal products let's say hypothyroidism in which increased metabolism of cells occurs which will lead to increased utilization of vitamin b12 and folic acid both and next is some little malignancy in like uh, uh, like leukemia or lymphoma which is a white blood cell white blood cell tumor in which wbc cells are were produced more 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 and more so if the wbc cells were produced more dna has to continuously replicate and more dna needs to synthesize so that but uh, for that vitamin b12 and folic acid need to be given continuously to the bone marrow so uh, these stores were used up and the deficiency occurs in these conditions and next let's see folic acid deficiency causes like like we saw before if there is decreased intake like in the malnutrition in the infants or elderly and if there is chronic uh, if there are chronic alcoholics this is the most common cause of folate deficiency do remember that guys chronic alcoholics alcohol does two things to this folic acid what it is alcohol does two things to this folic acid first it does not allow this folic acid to get absorbed from the intestine and next folic acid it makes folic acid to not release it from the liver understood two ways it is blocking the folic acid folic acid to get into the blood circulation so that folic acid uh, folic acid levels will become less in the body and if there is excessive heating of food uh, food or goat milk please do remember that excessive heating of food it means even 10 minutes excessive heating of food will cause this folic acid to get denatured and next malabsorption like in the celiac disease uh, like it's the same in the vitamin b12 deficiency celiac disease diffuse small bowel disease like in the malignant lymphoma usually uh, which usually occurs in association with other vitamin deficiencies fat and water soluble vitamins and in the bacterial overgrowth like i said before and drug inhibition 5 5-fluorouracil uh, which is a chemotherapy drug inhibits thymidylate synthase methotrexate and trimethoprim inhibits dimet uh, di uh, sorry dihydrofolate reductase i'll explain it phenytoin phenytoin inhibits this intestinal conjugase i will explain it please be patient like uh, whatever the food we are eating they are in polyform they are in polyform these uh, polyglutamate form these polyglutamates need to be converted into monoglutamates this polyglutamate need to be converted into monoglutamate for this this intestinal conjugase is causing this reaction from uh, of the conversion of polyglutamates that is folic acid which is in the polyglutamate form is converting into monoglutamates if the fen if the patient is taking phenytoin which is, which is anti seizure drugs it is going to block this intestinal conjugase and there will be no conversion of polyglutamate to monoglutamate and monoglutamate cannot be absorbed into the body and folic acid deficiency occurs in these patients i hope it is clear and then the other causes were if the patient is taking oral contraceptives and alcohol oral contraceptives and alcohol in these patients sorry these oral contraceptives and alcohol inhibit uptake of monoglutamate in jejunum alcohol also inhibits the release of folate from the liver like I explained before and next if there is increased utilization same explanation i have given i have given before in the vitamin b12 deficiency pregnancy or lactation and disseminated malignancy in which increased utilization of folate in dna metabolism severe hemolytic anemia please don't get panic by saying this disease i will make it easier 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate which is the circulatory form of the folate that is folic folic acid okay this is given to the cell as soon as it given it into the cell 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate is converted into tetrahydrofolate due to methyl group is taken up by something which is called as methyl cobalamin the other name for methyl cobalamin was yes it is vitamin b12 this methyl group which is taken up by the vitamin b12 is given to the homocysteine this uh, when methyl group is, is added to the homocysteine it is converted into methionine so why body converts homocysteine to the methionine this homocysteine is very toxic compound to the body because what it does is it goes and attacks the endothelial cells it goes and attacks the endothelial cells and make it disruptive and when this thing occurs like we like we know before 
cholesterol will come and deposit uh, cholesterol will come and deposit here and atherosclerosis develops that is the one condition and next when there is a breakdown of endothelium platelets needs to come and stick here and repair this endothelium then platelets will be used up and thrombosis develops in those in those areas and next if the platelets and clotting uh, clotting factors were used up in one area there, there will be no availability of platelets and, and uh, clotting factors in another area where the bleeding occurs this condition is called as DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation. So homocysteine causes three things to the body. That is one is atherosclerosis, and next is the thrombosis, and next is the DIC. Okay, so let's continue here. Five methyl tetrahydrofolate. Methyl group is taken up by the vitamin B12. Tetrahydro only tetrahydrofolate is remaining. Tetrahydrofolate converts serine to glycine. In in the meantime, tetrahydrofolate is converted into 5,10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. This 5,10 methylene tetrahydrofolate is converted into dihydrofolate by the enzyme which is called as thymidylate synthase. Remember which is inhibited, uh, which drug inhibits for thymidylate synthase here? Thymidylate synthase is inhibited by 5-fluorouracil. Understood? This 5,10 methylene dihydrofolate, why, I come, why I am saying it, it as dihydrofolate? One dihydrofolate is dihydrofolate is here. 5,10 methylene dihydrofolate is given to this deoxyuridine monophosphate. This deoxyuridine monophosphate is converted into deoxythymidine monophosphate, and it goes to the DNA and DNA synthesis occurs. This dihydrofolate is again converted into tetrahydrofolate by the enzyme which is called as dihydrofolate reductase, which is inhibiting this methotrexate and trimethoprim. Okay, I hope this is clear. One last, uh, one last reason: 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate is converted into 5-methyl tetrahydro. Uh, sorry, 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate is converted into tetrahydrofolate, and methyl group is taken up by the vitamin B12, and it converts homocysteine to the methionine. And tetrahydrofolate is converted into is con converts serine to glycine. In the meantime, in the meanwhile, tetrahydrofolate converts into 5,10 methylene tetrahydrofolate, and 5,10 methylene tetrahydrofolate is converted into dihydrofolate with the help of the enzyme which is called as uh, sorry thymidyl synthase and deoxyuridine monophosphate in, is converted to deoxythymidine. Next, when it comes to the pathogenesis, impaired DNA synthesis occurs. This is due to a delayed nuclear maturation. Block in the cell division occurs. This is due to cell things that cell things that I will get vitamin B12 and I will get and I will replicate, but it won't get uh, it won't get vitamin B12 as there is a deficient vitamin B12 and folic acid. This is due to less availability of vitamin B12 and folic acid, and there will be block of cell division, which produces large and nucleated hematopoietic megaloblastic cells in the peripheral peripheral circulation. All rapidly dividing cells are affected, like RBCs, leukocytes, platelets, and intestinal epithelium. If the intestinal epithelium is occurred, clinically it is seen as glossitis, which is gla uh, glass shaped tongue. Tongue appears in glass shape. Cellular RNA and pro protein synthesis continues unabated, unabated, which leads to cytoplasmic volume continues to expand. If there is ineffective erythropoiesis, megaloblastic precursors, uh, precursors are located outside the bone marrow sinusoids. It means they are, they, uh, these megaloblastic precursors are abnormal cells in the peripheral circulation. This is recognized by the macrophages, macrophages and these were phagocytosed and destroyed by these macrophages or, or they, are, they, they themselves undergo apoptosis. These two things will do two th will do one thing like the release of bilirubin into the blood circulation, which which leads to increased bilirubin levels in the blood. And next, it produces pancytopenia, that is anemia, neutropenia, and thrombocytopenia. And then, clinical findings of vitamin B12 deficiency, findings of pernicious anemia, that is. A chlorohydria, this is due to antibodies were attacking parietal cells, which leads to reduced secretion of hydrochloric acid. So there will be a chlorohydria. And if there is continuous destruction of body, uh, uh, destruction of cells in the body of the stomach, cells needs to continuously replicate. In the process of replicating, there, there will be one error, which leads to the development of tumor there. Okay, and glossitis, I explained before. Neurological disease, I will first I will read up to here and then I will explain it how. Okay. Neurological disease, peripheral neuropathy with motor and sensory dysfunction, posterior column dysfunction, decrease in vibratory sensation and proprioception, uh, proprioception that is joint senses less, and lateral corticospinal tract dysfunction with spasticity and dementia. 
increased risk of atherosclerosis and thrombosis disease due to increase in homocysteine like, like I explained before. Association with other immune diseases as examples of Graves disease, Hashimoto thyroiditis and Addison's disease. Clinical findings in folate deficiency are, are were also similar except but these neurological symptoms were absent. This is due to the fatty acids Need, uh, uh, need to be converted into methyl melanol coa when this methyl melanol coa should be converted into succinyl coa and the cofactor which is vitamin b12 so if there is vitamin b12 deficiency occurs with this methyl melanol coa accumulates in the body this will go and attack on the myelin sheaths uh, sorry myelinated nerve fibers and it will cause all these neurological symptoms can you see here if there is there any folic acid involved here no that's why there won't be any folic any symptoms of neurological diseases in folate deficiency now laboratory findings in vitamin b12 deficiency include decreased serum vitamin b12 if there is deficiency then there should be decreased serum vitamin b12 increased serum homocysteine all the things i explained before Increased unconjugated by lutein. This is due to ineffective atherosclerosis. Cells were eaten up by the macrophages, or it, it itself undergoes apoptosis. Increased methyl melanol CoA, which is the most sensitive test for vitamin B12 deficiency. Increased methyl melanol CoA is the most sensitive test for vitamin B12 deficiency, and reduced levels of folic acid and RBC are RBC folate levels were the most sensitive tests for folic acid deficiency. This increased methyl, uh, methyl melanoic acid is present in 95% of cases and increased lactic dehydrogenase. This is due to RBCs contain lactic, lactic dehydrogenase in, in its body, in its cytoplasm. So it is present in 85% of cases. Okay. Peripheral blood findings where pancytopenia occurs and egg shaped macrocytes, hypersegmented neutrophils in which more than five nuclear lobes. This is present before anemia and is the last finding to disappear with treatment remember this and now this is the peripheral smear and this is the bone marrow smear can you see here this is the neutrophil how many lobes are, are present one two three four five six and seven seven lobes of uh, seven lobes of nucleus were present in neutrophil and if you see here this uh, these are the largest cells produced by the bone marrow okay and next this is the uh, this is the bone marrow picture here also one two three four and five and here one two three four and five one two three uh, understood this is the bone marrow picture in which there is multi low hyper segmented neutrophils were present now bone marrow findings bone marrow aspiration is not usually necessary to secure the diagnosis because it involves painful procedure to the patient to remove this bone marrow or bone marrow asp to aspirate the bone marrow and all so it is not usually preferred megaloblastic nucleated cells were present primitive to open lazy chromatin in all stages of rbc normal blood and leukocyte development as well as megakaryocytes mm -hmm. giant band neutrophils are a prom prominent finding Chilling test is a definitive test that identifies certain cause of vitamin B12 deficiency. But this chilling test is not used in nowadays. This is due to we have to first inject the radio label cobalamin with uh, attaching to the, either attaching to the intrinsic factor or uh, and we have to collect it after 24 hours. And if the uh, and if the intrinsic factor deficiency is not there, again we have to we have to give antibiotics and again we have to inject uh, inject and again we have to uh, we have to see it after 24 hours. So this is the time taking process so shilling test is not used nowadays and for folic acid just by checking the levels of folic acid in the blood were enough thank you